Um, well, hello, everybody. And hello. hello. Come on, let me hear it. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> well, uh, my name is Mindy Sterling, um, and um, this is a, a really nice treat for me to talk about myself. <laughs> and uh, But if you have any questions, that would be really wonderful as well. Or even, and it doesn't even have to be anything from um, any of the work I've done. You can ask me. Uh, what time do I go to bed at night? Or um, do I like um, um, dogs? Or um, I, do you like vacuuming? Yes. Uh, do I do, no, I have not done karaoke in a long time. I think I was high when I did it last, so we don't want to get into that. But anyway, um, so yeah, so um, thank you for having me. I, um, I live in LA. And um, that's where I live, um, do my work, and um, I have a dog and a cat. And they're older. I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a hard time getting older myself. And then having my dog, just when I'm gone and stuff, the look on her eyes uh, is um, really, really um, scaring me because it does look like... If you leave one more time, I swear I'm going to die. <laughs> and that makes me nervous. I know, it's terrible. And you know, like in um, Facebook, if you scroll there, do you know how many people are going, well, we had to say goodbye to Toby. We had to say, I can't look at that. So I'm constantly, oh my God, I don't even want to see any of these pictures anymore. It's really hard because they're family, right? I mean, do you all have pets? Yep. yep. And aren't they family? 10? <laughs> you have 10 pets? Like 10 dogs? Five dogs and like eight uh, um, shrimp? Three cats and two bunnies. Oh my God, all right, that's a lot. In your house? Yeah. Do you have a farm? No. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> um, so, no. Oh my God, no, no, no. But that's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big part. So that's where I live. And um, right now I am still um, working on the Goldbergs. Does anybody watch that show? the Goldbergs. It's really funny, guys. The 80s, and um, it's a very, very fun, silly show. So, what? Who's that? Uh, Charlie Brown's teacher, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Mm hmm I like you. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm doing um, the Goldbergs. I'm shooting that when I get back. And, um, yeah, this is a really weird time, you know, being um, in this COVID uh, environment and uh, trying to work and everything changing. And um, it's a huge adjustment. So I'm just so glad that I was able to come out here without a mask for sometimes and, um, and you know, and be a part of this you know, um, this thing we're having. So does anybody have anything that they want to ask me or about my career or about, um, you know, like I said, uh, how big my bed is and, um, or uh, who, who am I friends with? I don't know, <laughs> I'm even just saying any of that. But anything silly, I like silly questions, so please go for it. Get into show business. Okay, there you go, number one. Um, well, uh, I was a very shy kid, and my father was a, uh, he was a singer and an entertainer, and I was raised in Miami, Florida. S really? Where, in Miami? Yeah. Oh my gosh, okay, North Miami Beach. I was, well, I was in North Miami, near Oklahoma. Okay, there you go, yes. So I was raised there. And, um, but going to school, I was, you know, really kind of quiet and shy. And I found out, oh, so if I get into drama, or if I get into the theater, I can be other people, and I wouldn't be feeling so insecure about myself. So I thought that would be a great idea to do, which I ended up doing. And, um, kind of really loved the theater program and doing plays and all that kind of stuff. And um, so when I got older and it was time, I you know finished my high school and went to a two year junior college and all I did was take uh, acting classes. I did nothing else because <laughs> I wasn't good in anything else. And um, I came out, uh, out to LA, I think when I was like 22 and um, kind of started there, got a commercial agent, and I did a lot of theater. Anybody like theater? Theater's back, theater's back, yes! 
And um, so, yeah, so I got involved in theater, local theater, and then I got an agent. And, you know, I mean, it, it sounds so one, two, three, four, five, but, you know, it takes a while and stuff. So, and I've been doing it for, oh my gosh, um, I'm going to change it a long time. And um, so, yeah, and I love it, and it's great when it's great. And it's really not great when it's not great. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of, you know, you feel, you know, maybe money issues or just the insecurity of why aren't I not working? Why didn't I get that job? I auditioned, um, but I'm not going to be guaranteed something. So it, it is, it, it, it does take um, a toll on your soul a little bit. So you have to know that it's not personal. And there's um, a lot of people in LA that want to do the same thing. So just think about how many people just go to Los Angeles to be an actor or an actress, you know, that you're always, uh, you know, up against. But I was lucky to have a career, and I think the first big hit that I had was Austin Powers. And that was, no. Oh, <laughs> thank you, and I knew it, you know, I knew that, um, I had met Mike Myers, we were doing, I'm, I'm from the Groundlings, which is an improv group or an improv theater in Los Angeles, if you're familiar with them. A lot of wonderful people came from there, um, Pee Wee Herman, um, uh, let's see, Edie McClurg, um, a lot of people from SNL. Um, so I, uh, I joined that company and um, did a lot of improv, which is like my favorite thing ever, 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 ever. Right, sir? <laughs> and I am at, I'm mostly at home when I can improvise and I don't have to read a script. And um, so anyway, so I started doing, I did improv a couple of times with Mike Myers. Even though he was not a part of the Groundlings, he would come he was invited by another uh, Groundling alumni who was on SNL and Julia Sweeney. Do you remember Julia Sweeney? Okay. And so she brought him and we would do improv together. And I was so excited and nervous and thought he was just so awesome and funny and blah, blah, blah. And then he thought I was the same. <laughs> um, and so I was like, wow. So I remember um, doing this show, he was, doing a, he was trying out um, a character called Austin Powers. And he was doing it in the theater of the Groundlings. And he had a couple of um, uh, uh, people from the Groundlings be a part of it. And I think I was the only woman. I wish I had the good memory to find out what I did. Like what character I did. Maybe I did a little bit of Frau. I don't remember. But you were there to facilitate him. He was trying out his character. So you were there to do that. But anyway, so we just did a lot of improv together. Then when Austin Powers was written and it started to be cast, I heard about it. And um, I'd gone in to audition. And I remember the night before thinking, oh my god, I have to come up with a German accent. And all my accents sound the same. And I was listening to German. I called my father, who is um, you know, the actor. And I said, how do I do a German accent? And I don't get into you know, the Jewish accent. And um, so I worked on it and I worked on it and I went in and I was at a table, I probably about this big, not this long, but this, this wide. And I remember the director was sitting right across from me, Jay Roach. And so, you know, I started to do, you know, the, um, the one about the Lucky Charms and um, I was reading it and he was like, great, 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 great. Now, just improvise. Don't add, add more to it. Don't worry about the words. And I was like, oh, all right. So I did the whole Lucky Charms, and uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like uh, the children love it because it's like candy, it's like marshmallows, and it's, it's all, you know, they say it's fruit, but it's not because it's all candy. So, and I just went on and on and on. He was laughing, blah, blah, blah. And um, I remember leaving. And walking home, as I usually do after an audition, and going, oh, God, I sucked. <laughs> oh, God, I was horrible. Oh, God, why? Oh, I'm embarrassed. You know, and you just, is, we're horrible as actors. And we start, you know, just, um, you know, really putting ourselves down. Well, I got a phone call, and uh, they said that they wanted me to be Frau. And 
you know, um, that, that I was in, insanely excited because uh, I just knew this was going to be a big thing for me. Um, I remember getting this script and reading it and laughing out loud. You don't usually laugh out loud when you're reading something, but this made me laugh out loud so much. And, um, and then I, you know, I kind of looked at the cast and I'm like, wow, you've got Mike Myers, you have Seth Green, you have Robert Wagner, you have uh, Will, Fort, um, uh, uh, Will Ferrell, and then me. And I was like the lowest one on the totem pole in terms of, you know, success and career, but not to say that I was not the funniest. But anyway, um, so uh, I was just like, wow, this, this is amazing. So I remember, we, so we did, the first, we did the first film and it couldn't have been more fun. I mean, I got to do everything that I wanted to do, and then some. And people ask me, what is your, you know, the, the craziest or funniest moment for you? And I said, well, I remember Mike and I were doing this scene where I do the whole, um, you're late, or I'm late. You know, and I come in and I do that whole thing. And, he's, and he goes, yeah, I know. I go, no, 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 I'm late. <laughs> And he started laughing, and I thought, oh my God, I got Mike Myers to laugh at me first before I let go. And we could not look at each other. And it was like one in the morning. Mike did not like to get up early. So you would come in around one in the afternoon, which usually when you're shooting, you're there early in the morning, like 5.30 for hair and makeup, and then blah, blah, blah. No, he liked to sleep. So you would come in, like in the afternoon, so then you wouldn't leave until, you know, after midnight. And I just remember this was the last scene of that day. And everybody's waiting for us, and why can I, just giggling. Um, so that just made me laugh, and it was just, the, to me, the biggest treat that he thought I was that funny. Um, and the other thing about Mike was that um, he was like a child. He is really a genius, but he was like a child. And he would get really excited when somebody brought in chocolate. <laughs> I just remember this, it was just somebody brought in chocolate. It would almost be like a treat for a dog. And his, his energy would just go up like anybody eating chocolate. Um, so he would you know, go from he's tired and blah, blah, blah to somebody giving him chocolate. And he's like, ah! and he'd just be so super hy hyper. And we all loved it. And it was really, really fun. I, I, I'm telling you, I had the best time ever. Doing those three films is almost next to, like, nobody does that anymore. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And for me to be a part of those three films and seeing where this is going um, was, you know, like really one of the most amazing times in my life. And I will never, ever get old of having anybody tell me, um, you know, how how was it to work with him or my god you you know what a great film it's you can i could talk about it forever so that definitely was what took me to a different place the only problem was after you get there everybody that wants to hire you for something wants you to do the same thing she's she's german okay well i can't do that well make her russian and there, it's going to be the same thing <laughs> Because it's all too, yes, yes, something. But I was always, they always wanted me to be me, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So people, they, 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 they put you in that box. And it was like, but I'm a groundling. I'm, I do characters. I'm a character actress. So I do a lot of different things. So it took a while before that, you know, was giving me the opportunity to then branch out and, and do other things. But I definitely have to always um, thank Mike Myers and his team for um, opening the doors for me. It was very, very exciting. Yes? Oh, uh, what was your favorite stage play that you were in? Stage play? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I'm doing one um, next month. I'm actually going to North Carolina to do a two-person play if anybody lives near North Carolina and you want to come see me. <laughs> um, and it's called Yes, Virginia. And it's, a, it's a, written by a friend of mine, Stan Zimmerman. And it's just me and this other woman. And I love doing this because it's an original based on his family. And it's a great play. Um, I love doing plays. I once was in Gypsy. And I played Dainty June. And um, I fell off the stage. <laughs> and I think all you heard was, fuck! <laughs>
in, in, yeah, in the uh, blackout, but uh, it hurt, okay, it hurt. Um, so, yeah, um, but I did, a, I did a lot of plays in, in school. I did like Butterflies Are Free and um, things like that, and I'm musically, so I, you know, I can also sing. Um, but yeah, ooh, that was a good question. Anybody else? Yells and startles. Everybody? Me. Yes. You mean like this? <laughs> yes. Is that written into the character or is that added in? Well, it, it'll, it'll say she, as she yells, but I've been told that nobody yells like me. <laughs> and that really is how I, when I'm, when I, you know, when I'm yelling, I'm, my, my voice is a hock of iron. So it, it's, you know, it is that Scott that is just me yelling. <laughs> so. He says he came up with it. So. Oh, really? Yeah, they said, yeah, she came up with a yelling claim. Well, but it did say yell. I remember seeing yell. Now, some, some of the stuff I, you know, um, I yelled on my own after I found that that became a good thing. But my favorite thing is to do, because, you know, I have a son. He's 26. And, you know, when you have kids, they don't think you're as cool as everybody else thinks you are. <laughs> But what I can still get him to laugh, and he's in the car with me, and I, I'm driving home, and we get into the garage, and I'll just start, stop the car, and then just yell, get out! Get out! He just laughs and giggles. He's 26. And that, you know, that's, I'm so, so grateful that I can make him laugh just by yelling. Um, but yeah, but really they said that, I, maybe I did, I don't know. I have a really bad memory. What else did they say? I don't know. <laughs> I think, yeah. Um, but, yeah. What else? Have you thought about doing a voice for Waze? Just screaming all the time? Oh, my God. Can you imagine? <laughs> no one would go anywhere. <laughs> That'd be the most, oh, hor horrible, horrific thing that I could ever do to anybody's car. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Now left. Yeah, that would be just pretty nasty. Yes, yes. Oh, you went past it. Turn around. Because <laughs> don't you hate when they go when it when it says um, what does it say? Recalculate. Fuck. Oh, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything else? Prefer film acting or voice acting? Oh, what do I prefer? Mm -hmm. um, I um, I love voice acting because you don't have to memorize anything, and it's right there, and you can just come in however you want to look, and blah blah blah. I really really love that a lot, and been fortunate to start doing more and more. Um, I do love um, you know on on camera stuff because um, I like that instant gratification of, you know, I mean, well, I mean, not everything is, um, you know, the audience laughing, but um, you, 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 there's just more levels to it. Who? Oh, yes, this is right. Um, does everyone know iCarly? <laughs> and no, I am not in the new one. Didn't work out. Um, oh, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to move on from being, yes, from being, um, you know, a mean teacher. Um, so I do get to play a lot of mean people, and I'm not mean. But um, it was great. I mean, I had a great time with it. Um, the kids are um, were interesting to to work with. Very sweet, very well um, mannered. Um, it's very interesting working with children and um, their parents. Um, I've had great experiences. I've had some where I literally felt I had to be their parent. I did a show years ago, and I felt like, you know, I'd have to go, um, you know what, don't touch the props that are on the set. He, did you not hear him? He just said, don't touch it. Where's the mother? You know, and then it would be like, you know, that kind of thing. And it's like, mm, not good. Um, I don't necessarily like to see the back, uh, you know, the, the, the back end of how the, the, the parent and the ch why is this child doing it? Clearly, they don't really want to be here or, you know, there's the, the, the strange dynamics. Not all children should be doing, um, you know, working like this. Wait till they're old enough so they know what they're doing. Have them go to school. 
have them take classes. I was, I was, you know, in theater, so nobody put me up there, um, you know, when I was um, five. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. Oh, that was good. That's a really good question. Um, I think that Nickelodeon seemed like it was a little bit um, looser. Um, there wasn't as many restrictions. And, you know, Disney has, has a name, Disney. And Disney represents so much, well, we think, goodness and, and fairy tales. And so it, it just came under a different umbrella and they pay horribly. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, Nickelodeon was, I think, there was just a little, they, they were a little rougher. They were, they were a little bit more open and, you know, to, to letting things happen. And um, so uh, I enjoyed working on Nickelodeon a little bit more than Disney. Disney had so many rules. And you know what? I never could get a goddamn ticket to go see Disneyland. <laughs> never understood that at all. Um, but so, yeah. Is, is that what you mean by, yeah. So it was a little bit like that. Definitely. Do you prefer film or TV with the atmosphere and the coming back in the same over and over again? Oh, I like that. Well, I, I really love film. I do a lot of um, uh, independent films, a lot of low-budget films, which a lot of us actors are doing more and more lately because we want to work and because they're interesting and they're different. I played, I did a short. I love shorts because you know why? They're short. <laughs> and yes, it's easy. Um, and... Um, so uh, I did a short where I got to play a schizophrenic woman. And I was like, I, I, you know, I was like, why did you, how could you have thought of me? And it was dramatic. And I said, well, how did you think of me to be this schizophrenic woman? And they had seen something that I'd done. Because, you know, you can always go online and find pieces of what people have done and, and all. And um, so I loved that because... In film, you can take your time. There isn't, you know, when you're doing television, they're going to edit a lot. They, they have a time, you know, especially sitcoms. Um, you know, you, you, you know, they, they, they've got a, an audience. I mean, not nowadays, they don't. But everything is really time for television. But films, the editor can make or break that and the edit editor can you know leave stuff in or maybe they have to cut 20 minutes out so but you you have time to to sort of think and you're not like you know i mean there's some television shows that like remember the gilmore girls everything is really fast you they talk really fast in their dialogue and it's like oh my god i can't think that fast <laughs> nor do i talk that fast i don't think but um so yeah, I, I, I do like them both, but I think I like film a little more. But during a television show, like I'm doing with the Goldbergs, best time of my life. They are the loveliest people to work with, work for. I am so grateful to have a job. I am so grateful to work with Wendy McClendon Covey, who plays Mrs. Goldberg, um, and the whole group of people. You, it's, I always wanted to be in a show that you were part of their family. And I feel like right now, I'm recurring, so that means I, um, I'm in it a lot, but I'm not one of the regulars. And uh, so you, can, you get to come back and you get to see the crew and you get, you know what I mean? You, so you all, you all, everybody's there to help you and love you and you don't feel odd. What's really odd when you're doing a TV show and you're just a guest star, you don't know anybody. So now you're asked to come on and they've already, the, the, the regulars are already, they know each other. Hey, you know, Steve, how was your weekend? Oh, m yeah, Marjorie threw up all, all night. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, we went to, and they're talking and they're, they, they, they're, they're friends. You come in, and you're like, oh my God, I hope I don't know my lines. Okay, hi, okay, Mindy, hi, Mindy, this is, uh, everyone, this is Mindy Sterling, hi, 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 and okay, okay, so why don't we go this, you do this, you do that, and you're like, wow, that's a lot, okay. <laughs> and you, you just feel alone, 
And then when there's breaks, they all go and they talk and you're just by yourself. So, you know what, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, going to a party and you don't know anybody and nobody's come over to you yet and asked um, your name or, um, you know, hey, you wanna go have lunch? <laughs> so it, it's really odd to be a guest star. So when you see somebody on a show and they're playing a guest star on it, um, you uh, know that it's not that easy. So I love the idea of family. I love being that everybody knows I'm good at this, I'm not good at that, or I'm loud, or I'm this, you know what I mean? So there is no, I have to pretend to be somebody I'm not. Any more? Oh, where, oh, oh, hi. I'm gonna circle back to voiceover. What can you tell us about your time on Chowder? Oh, well, it's been Oh, does anybody know or have ever seen Chowder? Really? I love that. That's like one of the first things I did, actually. I think maybe the second thing I did, but um, that was really fun for me. And if you don't know the character I played, her name was Miss Endive, and Chowder was all the um, characters' names were names of food. And um, so I played Miss Endive, and she was this big woman who um, nobody liked because she loved um, one of the leads, Mung. And she always wanted to get him. And uh, it, she's, you know, she was just the one that everybody found obnoxious. And um, I had the best time. And that's the first time that I was turned on to uh, Tara Strong. Do you all know who Tara Strong is? OK, she's like the number one voiceover lady. She's amazing. And um, yes, and so that just, again, gave me more opportunity to um, learn. Because when you're doing voiceover, um, the interesting stuff is I, I go into a booth, and let's say there's other people in the booth with me. Sometimes you only go by yourself. Sometimes they only record your voices and the, your dialogue, and then they'll call in, you know, Sam McCooley, and he'll do his voices, and then they'll call in Judy Dunupi, and she'll do her voices. So they don't all bring you in. Sometimes they will bring you all in, so when everybody's in a different place, which is really cool, because then I get to sit there, and I'm like this little girl at a candy shop, and I'm like, oh my God, there's blah, blah, blah. Yeah, oh, and, and, you know, and I'm watching them work and, and all that kind of stuff. And but the fun thing is, they can work like this. Uh, um, one of my favorite people, Phil Lamar, I don't know if you know who Phil Lamar is, okay. Amazing, amazing voiceover. But I remember doing something, I think I did something with um, um, League, the League of, not the League of Your Own, but the League or something. Huh? Justice League? Yeah, I did that. And <laughs> um, as a guest star. And um, he's, he's sitting there, and most people, when they're not talking, this is what they do. What a surprise. Right? Oh, I'm not on. Sorry. And he would be doing this and doing this. And when it was his time to come in. Yes, you're right. And then he would just go back to doing it. And I was like, oh, my God. It's like, you know, they, they just know how to do it. They know how to pull it out and bring it back. So I found that fascinating. And you can do so many different things. And you're still acting. So when you're doing vo voiceover, you know, you're still, if I get excited, I'm not getting excited like this. I'm getting excited because everything changes when you use your body. <coughs> and so, uh, yeah, that is, um, to me, a an exciting medium to be a part of. I love doing voiceovers. What about con men? Because, I mean, as, as a convention promoter, I just... I I... Lo Did anybody see Con Man? I think you can still see it on somewhere if you look it up. It's with, it was with um, Alan Tudyk and Nathan Fillion. And basically it was about um, the Comic-Cons, working the Comic-Cons. And I played this horrible, what a surprise, woman <laughs> named Bobby. And she was Alan Tudyk's um, um, like manager. But she, too, wanted to be a part of it. She was horrible. And I remember going and talking to Alan, and and because um, he just kind of made the offer to me, and I didn't have to audition. Yay. And um, 
he said, well, I, I kind of would like you if you were like maybe in your 70s or 80s. And I went, oh, okay, why? <laughs> why do you want me to be so old? And he goes, well, no, I just, and I go, mm, well, I don't know. I think it'd be better if I just kind of play my age, but she's still very eccentric and blah, blah, blah. And he was so cool about it. And then my favorite thing was I, I asked him, would you mind terribly if I just wore a bunch of wigs? <laughs> I love wigs. Because they just change you. They change who you are. So I got to wear all these different wigs. Every time you saw me, I had a different wig on. But all she was, she was really selfish. She was really all for herself. And he really put his his you know, life with her to get him jobs because he wasn't working and his friend, his good friend Nathan Fillion was the successful one and he wasn't. So I just always made it un uncomfortable and uneasy for him. And the show, I think it, we went, I think we just did one season. Did we do one season? Oh yeah, they did this great kickstart thing where they put out there, it's almost like GoFundMe, but if you, if you gave money, you would be able to be in the show. And that was so cool for like the, the crowd scenes and the uh, cosplay scenes. So people did that. It was so cool to meet these people. They were wonderful. And, um, but I think it only ran for one season, not because it wasn't funny, but unfortunately they switched um, people in the upper you know, planks of Hollywood. I don't know. It just, it didn't work out. But you should see it because it really does take you back to what, what they're all about and panel discussions. And it's a very, very, very fun and interesting show. Con Man. Yeah, they basically play themselves as like a parody of yeah. Firefly. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Thank you for saying that. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it just, it, I love when people try new things. I, I hate seeing shows that are like, oh my God, another brilliant child, you know, who's in a family of um, delinquents, you know? Um, I love it when something is fresh and new and different, and that's why I like to do a lot of um, uh, films that um, are not big epic films, because people will, will take more uh, risks to do a, a great story, a lot of things with stories, you know, true stories or just interesting stories. Anything else? Yes? Was there anyone that you worked with that specifically, like, you were like, oh my gosh, I get to work with this person? And, like, who you were starstruck by, even though you were both actors? Pretty much everybody. Um, <laughs> you know, there's always something about someone that you really like and you want to get to know. And I'm such a people person, so I'm always like, oh, wow, what a pleasure, and, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, I did, uh, it was really funny because I did um, The Grinch Is Still Christmas. And I was going to work with um, Jim Carrey, and I thought, oh my God, this is going to be, he's going to be crazy. This is going to be so much fun. And um, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think he was really, really focused and centered because he had to put all that makeup on, the, the, the costume, the outfit. It wasn't very comfortable. And we had these, these noses, and we, they cut, you know, the prosthetics. It took us three hours to have them put on. And so it wasn't a very comfortable way to just hang out. So I thought for sure during the takes he would be making us laugh, blah, blah, blah. No. And he wasn't rude. He just was, I think, just really saving his own energy and soul because he knew what he had to do. And he always came on set and he was ready. He, he was, um, uh, he had worked, worked things out. So he was really an inspiration to, to watch to see him work and it wasn't about you know making us laugh it was about doing his job and he was brilliant in that so he was kind of cool oh i can be louder um <laughs> and i'm trying to think if there's anybody else what oh very yeah at home too um and uh i also worked with um Jim Jeffries. Do you know who Jim Jeffries is? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, that was also very, very fun. And um, I got to play uh, DJ Qualls' mother and um, Dan uh, Baccarol. Baccarol. 
his his mother too, and um, my character and um, uh, what's his name's character Jim um, didn't care for each other, <laughs> so that was kind of fun. But he was always he would always tease me because I would go and get you have craft services and you go get a meal for lunch, but. Um, I always got like an extra one because I was going to bring it home to my son for dinner. <laughs> and he just thought that was like insane. So he always made, I was like his like little sister. So he would always make fun of me. Everybody, get, make sure that you give your leftovers to Mindy. She will bring it home to her son. <laughs> ha ha. Um, but so uh, again, that was kind of a treat. Um, though he does not take my calls now. Um, and um, uh, gosh, who else? Um, I mean, there. I mean, I haven't worked with anybody that's, you know, pal. Oh, I did work with um, Michael Caine in the third, third Austin Powers. Wow. I mean, that was pretty cool because he's a story man. He loves to tell stories, and you know, he, I, you know, just great stuff like that. So, um, I was, yeah, that was kind of a cool thing for me because he was probably the, the, you know, probably the. Um, the most successful or the one that's been around the most um, and um, and I did work I did um, uh, I worked on um, uh, Grace and Frankie and I worked with um, Lily Tomlin and um, with what's her name Jane Fonda I'm so sorry um, <laughs> Jane Fonda, and I have a, a bad memory. And, and uh, oh, Jesus, it's my son. Um, no food for you. <laughs> my son. Um, he's just, just checking in on me, making sure he's still alive. Um, but, so, uh, it was very interesting, because Jane Fonda was very, you know, she's like, she, the, the, the character that she plays, she said, all right, let's get, let's get re rehearsing, let's do this, let's do that, hello. And, you know, and not very warm, not mean, just not warm. And then um, Lily Tomlin, who people say I look like, do I? Mm. No? Mm? Yeah? Okay. Um, what? My hair. M my what? Hair. My, oh. No, I don't know. It just, my, it just no, but people have said that I really look like her. I don't know. But anyway, um, so, I mean, I love her, so it's okay. But, you know, I like to look like me and like for somebody to say, oh, you look like a Mindy Sterling. So, no, so um, anyway, but she was the whole time. So you have Jane Fonda, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, being like that. And then you, you have uh, Lily just, this is what she did to me the whole time. She was just so cute because she was high. Um, she smokes pot. That's what I heard. She smokes a lot of pot. <laughs> I don't think it's a secret, but I'm, now I'm telling you. Um, so, yeah. I don't know what the question was now. I have, <laughs> as you can tell, I have not been smoking pot. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I just forget things. Where was I? <laughs> what else? Um, Oh, because you were talking about me working with people. Yeah. I mean, I worked with really some cool, fun people. And um, so, yeah. Never really starstruck, though. Um, well, um, you know, you might get a little nervous, but no, because um, they're, they're always so nice. I'll tell you, I think the bigger... Um, oh, okay. I, I do have... I, didn't, I did a reading... So it was a reading for a film. Do you remember the film? Uh, Barbara Streisand was the mom. So far, okay. And um, um, it was, uh, what's his name? It was the father. Uh, oh, okay. It was, um, oh, oh, oh God, see I'm, I'm drawing blanks on names and stuff. Okay, so she was the mom. Look, a quickly look, everybody, see if you can find it. Oh, and it was, what, the Fockers? Oh, Yes. Oh my God, that's Okay, who's the, who's the husband? Thank you. No, I think Rob Dustin Hoffman was her husband. I think the other in-laws. Yes, you're right. Oh my God, you know. Okay, anyway, so here I am. This was the only time that, I mean, I was really taken aback. Um, um, Jay Roach, who was the director of um, all of the Austin Powers, said, hey, would you come in and just read, um, we just need, you know, voices, and you read uh, several different voices, or character voices. <clears throat> and I was like, yeah, sure. Not expecting anything. So, long table came in, 
and um, I'm there with um, Fred Armisen. Do you know who Fred Armisen is from SNL? He was there, so he, he was with me. He was doing, he was doing all the, the incidental men voices. I was doing the women voices. And there was um, Robert De Niro, and um, there was, so they, Robert De Niro and Justin Hoffman went around and introduced themselves and were very, very lovely. And you know, you're like, fuck. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, guess who we had to wait on? Barbara Streisand. <laughs> and li literally, she came in and I couldn't stop looking at her. I just couldn't stop looking at her. And she was like sitting like this. reading and you know and I'm just thinking it's weird and um, would n never came over and introduced herself or nothing I mean she was so in her own little zone it's so interesting to just sit back and watch and I always say though to be honest with you some people say well this person's rude or that um, um, you know star is da 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 but I, I really do believe give them a give them a moment or give them some time because you don't know where they just came from. You don't know what their story is. You don't know if they're living in bad news right now. You don't know if they're not feeling well. You don't, you know what I mean? So I always try to think before I go there and go, oh, she was horrible to me. Um, that um, give them, maybe they're unaware or at that moment was not a particular good time for them. Yeah, I mean, you never, we all have a story. And some of us hide it, and some of us just can't. Am I done? Yes? Uh, did you ever have a moment when you saw the character you played, her voice, like as an action figure on a t-shirt, and just go, oh, that, like, that's me? Yes. Like, well, as, as Austin Powers, Frau never got a character. Uh, you know, a figurine. Never, never. Or, and, and, and um, yeah, number two. We did not. We're the only two that didn't out of, you know, the crew. But one day I was doing a Comic-Con and this girl comes over and she wanted me to sign something and she shows me and it's Lynn Beifong. They made a, a figurine out of Lynn Beifong, um, you know, for Cora. And I, where did you get that? Oh my God. I flipped out. I'd never had anything like that. So I got that. And then I did a Comic-Con and this lovely gentleman made about this big of a frow. He made it for me. And he gave it to me. So I love all the art and the stuff that people give me. Oh my God, I'm so blessed and just I'm so appreciative. But yeah, so that was that one time when I went, oh my God, that's me. Oh my God, or book, you know, I mean, it's like, it's still kind of cool to see when somebody draws my character and then we're like, oh my God, like, I just did a voice for her. <laughs> I don't know anything about her. Please don't ask me about Toph or any of the characters. I love when people go, do you remember when the button? No, I do not. <laughs> I don't even know what the story was about. <laughs> Some people are into it and I'm like, oh, sorry, I don't watch myself. <laughs> Anything else? You guys are great. Thank you for all the questions. Yes? All the characters you've done, which one do you feel you relate to the most? Oh, you're, these, are, these are really, really good. Wow, that I relate to. Um, well, uh, you know, it's really hard to say. I think there's a little me and everything to be honest, and I would have to go through my IMDb because I don't remember everything that I do. And, um, but um, yeah, I don't think I necessarily relate to, you know, the, the stereotypical mean teacher or, you know, anybody that's mean just for the sake of mean. Um, I just don't, would like not to think that I am at all like that. But I don't know, you can ask my son. Um, but no, so I just, I think there is a little bit of me in everything. So they're all pretty special to me. Yes, yes. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Some actors are, like they say actors, like, oh, I took something from set. I kept something. Do you mean stole something or just? <laughs> um, Reappropriated. 
Yes. Not that I know of. <laughs> Not that I am uh, familiar with. I did get whether it's the it's the um, original one or not, but I did get a, a, a the whip from Frau, and then I did get a pair of pants and her and her long sort of um, coat, and I do have that. I don't know why. I mean, I'm not going to wear them, but um, I just have it, and it's kind of cool to to know that that's that was a piece of of something I got from doing that film. But, um, yeah, but no, not really, not that I know of. And you know I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna go, God damn, I need to write to all of those people and tell them what I got. But no, I don't remember. <laughs> you know, oh, I hate when you do that, when you just forget, and then you're like, oh, I had such a great story! <laughs> um, anything else? Do you get any input on the Goldbergs? Like, do you get any, give any kind of ideas for shows? Because they're already on season nine. Can you believe that? Yeah. Are they doing a season 10? You said Maybe. Season. They don't know. You know, they're still, from, I think from year to year, they, they, they're still not sure. I think it, that if that show continues to do as well as it has for um, ABC, why not? It, you know, um, they, it's, it, it's very costly because each time you, you, um, you know, do the show again, bring it back, um, the um, uh, salaries go up. So, um, they, they kept the same core of actors all through the series. Oh, yeah, they paid them. They just added a girlfriend that one season. Was yeah, and there was something, yeah, something happened with her. I don't know what, I think she grew up too much or something. Boy, I she did. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But I know there was one girl that they, I think she got too sexual or something. They said, yeah. I don't know which one that is. <laughs> but, you know, she just grew up to be very sexual. <laughs> And, um, but no, I'm, um, I'm so grateful for working with the, the girls that I work with, um, and, I, and I knew them. So that was even when you go in, you know, you're a guest star, when you go in, you're like, oh my God, I know you! So we kind of all clicked and it become this lovely family. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely the salaries get higher and higher for the, the, um, uh, the original, the, um, not the originals, the, um, Standards, yeah. 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 So we'll hope. Hope, you know, I, I have a pension. It keeps going. It keeps getting bigger. I don't mind it at all. Believe me. And no, I do not have a mansion. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. Is there a particular fan experience, an encounter with a fan that stands out in your mind? Whether funny or touching or... Oh, I get a lot of touching. I think I got a lot more touching. I mean, not touching me, but <laughs> sorry. Um, but a lot more things where it, um, it it pulls the strings to my heart. It's there's something. I, first of all, I'm always um, flattered, and I love to be recognized. My girlfriend um, Anne is is always telling me, "Oh my God, she if no one recognizes me, she has to go up to somebody and say, "Have you seen the blah, blah blah? That's her, you know." So <laughs> that says a lot of that about me but um no i i really do love it so but when somebody has a story or i can see um them cry i mean i you know don't cry over me please but there's something that knowing that i've touched somebody or knowing that i've made someone happy and knowing that um the work that i do has been validated and somebody saying you're you know you're this you're that is just makes me feel so good because it's like um, you don't do these things to think that's what I'm going to do to you. You do these things because it's your job and you like doing them and and um, and and in bringing those stories or creating those characters for everybody. And then when someone feels connected to that, that is a blessing. Awesome. Yeah. Are we done? Was it supposed to be till eight thirty? I think I think because I think the place closes at nine, right? Yeah. Are you guys coming back tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. Really? Now, well, you you're not going to see new vendors, right? Yeah. Do you see new vendors? Oh, there'll be new. No, the same vendors. Right. So you like to come here and see and just keep walking around, seeing the same things over and over again. But bring money this time. <laughs> bring more money. <laughs> um, I think that's great. 
I wanted to do, um, I did this once before, I wanted to do instead of a, a, um, a q and I wanted to, to do like a workshop, like, a, um, like an hour long um, improv workshop. Wouldn't that have been fun? It would have been fun. <laughs> I know, because I think I only, have, I only have one panel. Next time, I, uh, next time I'll do it, but we'd have to move some things around, but I did it once, and it, you guys, they had the best time. It's, I, may, I will make you laugh. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm working with you. I'm not at me you won't laugh at, but I would make you laugh at yourselves and each other. It's really fun. Well, I hope I get a chance to do that again. Well, if that's it, thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom. <laughs>